Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Young Muslim Readers. Today we're going to read the book titled The Story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Summarized and illustrated by Abu Zohir. In a far off land in Babylonia, a boy named Ibrahim alayhi salam was born. The people in Babylonia worshipped the sun, moon, stars, and statues. His father was a statue maker. One day, Ibrahim alayhi salam asked, O oh father, why do you worship these statues? His father replied, My son, our fathers worshipped them before us. Alas, he alayhi salam was not satisfied with this answer. He asked, Why do you not worship the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? However, his father was too proud and did not listen to him. One day, the people invited him for their celebration. He refused to join them, saying he was sick. While they were away, celebrating, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, who was alone, took a big axe and went toward the statues. He then broke all the statues except the biggest one and hung the axe on its neck. When the people returned, they were shocked to see their gods destroyed. They suspected Ibrahim alayhi salam at once and asked him, Who did this to our gods? Ibrahim alayhi salam calmly replied, Ask the biggest one. The people knew that the big statue could not talk or defend itself. Due to their pride, they refused to accept their foolishness. The king of Babylonia, Nimrod, was very angry. He ordered his people to prepare a big fire to burn him, Ibrahim alayhi salam. When the red flames were sky high, Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the fire. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the fire to be cool and safe for him. The fire did not burn Ibrahim alayhi salam, nor did he feel the heat. He was grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, for saving him. As time went by, Ibrahim alayhi salam left Babylonia with his wife, Sarah, and his nephew, Lut alayhi salam. They traveled through many lands, and on their journey, they called the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone instead of worshipping the sun moon stars and the statues while traveling through egypt they met a wicked king he heard about ibrahim alayhi salam and his charming wife he summoned ibrahim alayhi salam to his palace and asked him about his companion ibrahim alayhi salam said that she was his sister. The king wanted Ibrahim alayhi salam to bring her to him. He came back to Sarah, warning her to tell the king she was his sister. Sarah was brought before the king and he was attracted to her beauty. When he was about to touch her, the king's hands became stiff and he could not move them. The king then begged Sarah to help him. She asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. The moment his hands were able to move, the king again reached out for Sarah. But he was punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again. The king finally gave up through fear of her and asked the guards to free her at once. Sarah was presented with Hajar, a maid, which was a gift from the king. Meanwhile, Ibrahim alayhi salam was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save Sarah from the wicked king. When Sarah returned safely with Hajar, Ibrahim alayhi salam was delighted. They thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful. One day, Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him how he gave life to the dead.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do you not believe in me? Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Yes, but to be stronger in faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to catch four birds, slaughter them, and place four portions of the birds on four hills and call out to them. When Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Bismillah, all the parts of the birds came together and flew back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. He knew that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could give us death and bring us all back to life. For many years, Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sarah did not have any children. Therefore, Sarah asked Ibrahim alayhi salam to take Hajar as his wife. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was very old, Hajar was blessed with their son. They named him Ismail alayhi salam. One day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Ibrahim alayhi salam to take Hajar and Ismail alayhi salam and leave them in Mecca. When they reached Mecca, he left them under a palm tree with some dates and water, which was just enough for a few days. Ibrahim alayhi salam then continued on his journey, obeying Allah's command. Hajar knew that Ibrahim alayhi salam was obeying his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so she put her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for them. Soon the dates and water ran out. Hajar did not have enough milk or water for Ismail alayhi salam, who was hungry. She ran desperately between two mountains called Safa and Marwa, looking for food and water. She then heard a voice which told her not to worry. Suddenly, there was water flowing up from the ground like a spring. She was so happy that she quickly collected the water by making a sound mound around the spring. The water from this spring was called Zam Zam. Soon after, some people from the tribe of Jurham were passing by, looking for water. Hajar shared the water from the Zam Zam spring with them. She then invited the tribe of Jurham to live with them in Mecca and they accepted her invitation. While Ismail alayhi salam was growing up to be a young man, his father had a dream in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam to sacrifice his only son Ismail alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam was very sad when he related this dream to Ismail alayhi salam. However, Ismail alayhi salam was a very brave boy. And he asked his father to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be patient. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was about to make this sacrifice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that they both sincerely loved him and would do anything for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel with a big ram from heaven and asked Ibrahim alayhi salam to sacrifice it instead. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Ismail alayhi salam grew up to be a strong young man in Mecca and the people of Jurham loved him. When Ismail alayhi salam was old enough, he chose a young maiden as his wife from the tribe of Jurham. After many years, Ibrahim alayhi salam returned to Mecca to meet his son Ismail alayhi salam. By then, his wife Hajar had died. Ibrahim alayhi salam visited his son's house twice, and on both occasions he could not meet him, but Ibrahim alayhi salam always left a message for Ismail alayhi salam with his wife. Ibrahim alayhi salam, who longed to meet his son Ismail alayhi salam, returned once again to Mecca. This time, he was happy to see him seated under a tree near the spring of Zamzam. They were delighted to see each other and were finally back together again. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam to build the Kaaba, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Ismail alayhi salam to help him and he agreed without any hesitation. He carried the stones for his father who was now very old. The Kaaba was built in the valley of Mecca next to the Zamzam spring. When the walls was high enough, Ismail alayhi salam placed a stone so his father could climb onto it and finish the roof. In it they placed the black stone which was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from heaven. Soon after the Kaaba was built, Ibrahim alayhi salam went back to his wife Sarah. One day, three angels visited Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sarah with some good news that they would be blessed with a son. Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sarah were surprised because they were very old and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful. When the son was born, they named him Ishaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made both his sons prophets. Many prophets were sent to guide the children of Adam alayhi salam who had forgotten their Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of Mecca with plenty of food and water and to guide all his children in worshipping none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted all of his wishes for he he is the most generous. Jazakumullah khairan for listening. Today we have read from the stories of the prophets, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. Till next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi